Now it's time to produce our final result, the extended Kalman filter. And you've seen all the equations and several parts of this unit, but let me put those together on one slide. So we have the prediction step, where we compute our predicted mu and our predicted sigma. So this is the predicted state and the predicted covariance matrix, where in our case, we compute the system noise from the covariance of our control noise. And we have the correction step, where we first have to compute our Kalman gain, where we have to replace every occurrence of the C matrix we used earlier by our Jacobian matrix of the measurement function. And from that we obtain our new system state and our new covariance. And these are the three equations for the correction step. So you already implemented the prediction step and the last thing you'll have to do is to implement this correction step. There's one final hint I want to give you regarding the correction step. Now in this step you will compute the new state as shown on the previous slide. So on this here is the innovation, which is a two vector of the range measurement minus the predicted range measurement and the measured angle minus the predicted angle. Now the difference in R will work as you'd expect, but the difference in angle might give you wrong results, which lead to bugs which are really hard to track down. Now say the measurement tells you that your angle is this, so C is almost pi minus some small delta, whereas the predicted position it's very close, so h alpha is minus pi plus some small epsilon. And so just subtracting those values, you will obtain 2 pi minus delta plus epsilon. And that is not the same as minus delta plus epsilon, which you would expect. And so what you have to do here is make sure the final range of the alpha component is within minus pi 2 pi. Although in our case, if you normalized c correctly, and if you normalized age correctly, then this case might probably not occur. However, in general, it is good to treat this case correctly. So always watch out when you take differences of angles, which may introduce some additional plus minus 2 pi offset. And still one more thing, when you compute the Kalman gain, this formula contains Q, which is the measurement covariance matrix. Now we will assume that Q contains the variance of the range measurement and the variance of the angle measurement, which are uncorrelated. And so in the program, sigma r is called measurement distance standard deviation, and sigma alpha is called measurement angle standard deviation. And keep in mind that q contains the variances, that is, the squared values of the standard deviation. So and here's the final programming assignment. So this is the familiar extended Kalman filter with its constructor, which has grown by two additional elements, the measurement distance standard deviation and the measurement angle standard deviation. Then here is G, our state transition function. And here you have to put in the derivatives with respect to the state and to the control. Here you'll have to put in your prediction function. Here you have to put in the derivative of the measurement function with respect to the state. In each case, I gave you a hint where to find this. And here, this is the new part. This is the correction step of the Kalman filter. And don't be afraid, your final function will be much shorter than the comments I've put here, but those comments will make your life easier. And so down in the main function, we have our familiar robot constants. And now we also have the constants we used in our unit B to extract the cylinders from the scan and to match them to the cylinders in the map. We have our filter constants, our motion and turn factor, and as well now here we set our measurement error in range and in angle. And you see I don't trust my hardware very much, so I say the measurement error is 20 centimeters and the angle error is 15 degrees. We start with an initial position and heading and an initial covariance matrix of 10 centimeters in x and y and 10 degrees in heading. And after initializing our filter class, we read all the data, so now we need the motors, but also the scan and the landmarks, which are here converted to the reference cylinders list. And here, this is our entire Kalman filter loop. So that's the prediction. This is exactly the same step that we used earlier. And it does the correction. Now, unfortunately, in the correction, there's many things to do. So we need to evaluate our scan data, find the cylinders, project them, find closest matching cylinders from our map, and then return the measurements from our scanner and the positions of the reference cylinders. And this is returned in observations. So observations is a list of pairs 
where the first element is the measured range and angle, and the second element is the xy coordinates of the corresponding landmark. Now, as we are at a certain position, we may see more than one landmark, and this is solved as follows. We just present the landmarks one after the other to the correction step of our Kalman filter. So in each step, we will give just one observation to our correction step. And so our correction step will get a measurement, range in alpha, and a landmark x and y, and will update the current state and covariance. And after having presented zero, one, or more observations to the filter, we start again and do the next prediction step. Also, for logging purposes, we put all the states into a list, all the covariances into another list, and for visualization, we also append all the matched reference cylinders from the used observations. And later on, we use this code to output all the positions, all the error ellipses, and standard deviations in heading, and all the matched cylinders. Now please program this function above here, and don't forget to replace all this other put your method here by your actual code.